Hi there. ESRI, creators of ArcGIS Pro, the big dog on the GIS block, has a new service called ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud. This lets you create really professional-looking maps very quickly without using QGIS. You can also add your own data to fully customize the map. These maps can be used online or for print publishing. Here's an example from Sarah Bell that shows what can be done with this. This is really great, but before you get too excited, there are two caveats. First, you need Adobe Illustrator. Other vector software, such as Inkscape, won't work. Illustrator by itself will cost you $23 per month. If you want the whole Adobe package, that's $50. Second, this service isn't free. The cheapest plan is $110 per year. But there is a free 21-day trial, so I encourage you to try it out. It's pretty cool. Here's how to get started. Do a search for ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud and click on Free Trial at the top, then sign up for a free trial. Fill out the form. You'll get an email. Open it and click on the Activate Your Trial button. This will take you back to the website for another form. When you're done, click the link to go to ArcGIS Online. Log in with the username and password you just created. When you see this page, you've successfully created your free ArcGIS account. Next, we need to download the plugin for Illustrator. You'll get another email. There is a download link in it. Click on that. Click Go to Download Options, then click on Mac or Windows button. The file will download to your computer. Double-click the downloaded file to install it. Once it's done, we're ready to go. Open Illustrator. Go to the Window menu, choose Extensions, and click ArcGIS Maps for Adobe Creative Cloud. In the Sign-in window, Select ArcGIS Online and use your credentials to sign in. Two windows will appear, Map Boards and Compilation. Select the Map Boards tab. You can zoom in or out to your area of interest or enter it in the search field and press Return. I'll enter Manhattan. The map will zoom to the area. Click on the search icon again and click on the X to remove the marker icon from the map. Next, you need to define the area you want for the map. Click on Draw at the top and draw a box around the area you want. When you release the button, this box will appear. This is where you set the size of the map board. Pull down the preset menu and you'll see some categories. I want this to be a print map, so I'll select Legal and click on the Landscape button. You can also experiment with the Set Level of Detail menu, but I'll leave it for now. It will set an appropriate level of detail for the scale of the map. I want this map to be in landscape orientation, but sometimes the selection area defaults to portrait. If that happens, click on the Modify Map Board Properties icon and set it to landscape. If you need to change the area of the map, Click on the blue line and some control points will appear. Drag one or more of these to resize the map board. Next, click on the preview and add content button at the top right of the map board. The compilation window will come forward and you'll see this. You can change the base map by clicking on the three dots next to topographic and choosing select base map. I'll select the streets one. Now I'll add some additional data. You can add data from GIS files, such as shape files, or from one of the online libraries. To do this, click on Add Content at the top left and select Add Layers. This is where you can add data from the built-in libraries or your own files. Click on Maps for Creative Cloud and you'll see this. There's a lot of useful data here, so take a minute to look through it. Be sure to also check out the Living Atlas and ArcGIS online options. Here I've added OpenStreetMaps Educational Establishments by clicking on the image, then clicking Add, then Close.
The layer is added to the map. If I expand the layer, I get a breakdown of its contents. It's easy to change the markers. Click on the flyout menu, the three dots, and select change style, then click on options in the top box. To change the symbols, double click on them and choose the symbols and colors you want. You can control the shape, size, and the fill and stroke colors. I'll change the size, shape, and fill colors. The map will be updated. To add labels, click on the flyout menu and select Manage Labels. Here you can set the size and placement of labels, font and size, and the data attribute to use for the labels. That's all I'm going to add for this map. Now I need to get it into a regular Illustrator window. To do that, click on Sync at the top, then enter a name and click Sync. When it's finished, close the map board window and you'll see your map in a regular Illustrator window. Here's the really great thing about this. Not only is everything vector, unlike using a base map in QGIS, but open the layers palette and you'll see all of the layers correctly organized and named. Compare that to loading each layer separately from OSM using QGIS. Now you can use all of Illustrator's capabilities to complete the map. All of the labels are completely editable. I also recommend combining like elements into single layers. One easy way to do this is to select an example of something, like the water, and go into select, same fill color. This will select all of the water pieces so you can combine them in a single layer. Here I just change the water color. We could have created this same map in QGIS, but we'd have to query each layer separately, then organize and rename them. That's a lot of work compared to the maps for Adobe Workflow. You can do a lot more with this than create simple maps. Here are a few quick examples of different base maps. This is just a basic introduction to maps for Adobe CC. Here are some links to some useful tutorials. Check out my designer's guide to creating great maps at the mapguide.net slash guide and download two free chapters. That's all for now. See you next time.